so this is going to be the format uh, for your uh, evaluation okay uh, where it will be uh, uh, taken up with respect to uh, technical competency individual contribution your presentation q and a the report okay so i have made three levels okay zero one and two so accordingly will be marked okay so this is going to be for uh, um for 10 marks okay so two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so ultimately it's going to be for 10 marks maximum two here okay so the same thing applies even here when they also plot two and uh, the report of whatever ppt that you guys will be doing okay you can submit it in the form of uh, report so is that fine all of you yes sir so so we had uh, you know looked into this problem uh, with respect to the digital television, right? Where we calculated uh, the uh, bandwidth that, are, that is required for a specific bit rate. We had seen as to how many number of pixels in a frame and how many frames per second and how many bits. So this uh, formula becomes important, okay, for you all to uh, find out uh, what is the bandwidth that is needed. Okay. okay. Fine. So moving on with the next uh, next part of it. Okay. So ultimately, we found out that you know we have values ranging from 118 Mbps to about 995 Mbps. So as as your quality of broadcast increases, okay, your values okay that is needed or uh, the 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 bandwidth that is needed also goes higher. Okay. Uh, there is something uh, called ATSC, okay, which is Advanced Television Committee, um, Television Systems Committee. Okay, so they actually, you know, keep track of what should be the um, aspect ratio and what should be the resolution, how many frames we can use. So a lot of uh, you know R and D happens uh, with uh, respect to digital uh, television and the contents. Okay, so we had to continue from here, uh, where we had to discuss about a uh, single uh, DBS transponder has to carry between four and eight TV programs to be commercially viable. Okay, so which means your, uh, uh, if you want to go commercial, okay, if you want to go live, uh, you need to at least have four to eight TV programs. Okay. So it is only then that uh, you know you can you can commercialize your uh, product or your each transponder. So that should be the capacity, you know. So without which you cannot proceed with your uh, commercial transmission. The program may originate from a variety of sources. For example, film, analog TV, or video cassette. Okay. So from the source, uh, they can uh, from the source side okay they can probably connect it to an analog tv or they can connect it to a video cassette and broadcast it okay so it depends most of the uh, most of the contents that you see okay uh, will be pre-recorded pre-recorded processed and then um, uh, made public or published right so it will be delivered at that specific point of time and there are a few programs as you all know which goes live right so uh, you know, so these are you know two types of contents. So based on these, you know, we can actually allocate different uh, channels or time slots for them. The program may originate from variety of sources. Okay, so as I told you, it can be pre-recorded or it can be um, uh, live. Before transmission, these must all be converted to digital, compressed, and TDM has to happen. So uh, yesterday, you know, we saw the importance of compression. Okay, we, we understood that once it's compressed, then you know a lot of data can be accommodated in a smaller space, right? So due to which, what is going to happen is we can we can transmit a lot of information 
with less space. So if compression doesn't happen, then you know I cannot transmit data, uh, you know more more content with the same space. So that's the important. And not only that, we need to concentrate on the quality of uh, transmission as well. Okay. So here we are referring to uh, time division uh, multiplexing. Okay, where each uh, slots are divided based on time. Okay, so channels are given different time slots, and accordingly it is processed so this tdm baseband signal is applied as upsk okay your phase shift king to the uplink carrier reaching a given transponder okay so it is based on uh, tdm and then the baseband signal is applied as your upsk the compressed bitrate and hence the number of channels that are carried depends on the type of program uh, which has been broadcasted right so as i was uh, discussing with all of you previously few contents need a lot of bandwidth okay uh, it can be because of um, because of the quality of streaming okay um, so here um, as an example i have taken uh, the uh, sports channel okay wherein uh, you can you just imagine in sports channel there will be a lot of movement okay so comparatively uh, you need a lot of bitrate unlike your uh, shows okay or for example your uh, uh, normal uh, on stage shows okay where there wouldn't be much of movements right so in that case there won't be much of bitrates but here in sports channels okay there will be a lot of movement and hence the bit rates are higher so that's why you can see uh, these sports channels uh, are a little costlier okay and and uh, if you want it in uh, higher quality in hd then again it's going to be it's going to cost you a little more right so if i have to use a standard definition television okay so the the bandwidth that is required is about you know 4 mbps for a movie and uh, 6 mbps for a sports channel so you can see the difference here even in standard definition okay uh, for sports it's consuming two more mbps extra so mpeg i think all of you are aware of this we have mpeg 4 running right now compression is carried out in this uh, standard which is mpeg mpeg 3 mpeg 4 right so you should actually look out with these uh, uh, documentation and try to check as to what changes happened with different versions. Okay, so the next one that we will be looking into is uh, satellite mobile services. Okay, so as you all know, okay, we do need satellite mobile services. Okay, because uh, with respect to military purposes, we do not want to rely on terrestrial networks because sometimes what's going to happen is uh, you may lose out your network. But then if you're connected to satellite, okay, there is a very less chance that you are disconnected. Even the most remote place okay, uh, can be connected via satellite. Although countries in the developed world are very well served by uh, global communications, they remain large areas and populations that have very limited access to telecommunication services. So there may there might be you know a lot of advancements in in technology in in uh, uh, with regards to communications, but still you know we are not connected hundred percent. So what I'm trying to say is there can be few areas okay where we uh, may not have signals okay. So that's a global problem, okay? Uh, I wouldn't say that it's a local problem, it's a global problem. Uh, and because of these structures, because of the city, because of the trees, buildings, okay, factories, uh, so the signals tend to fade away, okay? So th these are the limitations actually if we employ uh, terrestrial networks. So when I say terrestrial networks, those, uh, you know, networks which are on ground, the towers which are on ground. In 
in US and some uh, European countries, telephone landline density measured by number of phone lines per 100 people is as much as 30 times higher than in China, India, Pakistan, and Philippines. Okay. So what we, try, what we are understanding here is the density is much higher. Okay. The telephone landline density is much higher okay for 100 people okay so for per 100 people it is as much as 30 times higher okay um, so the telecom networks is much uh, you know highly uh, densely created okay than comparing to the countries mentioned and an estimated 3 billion people worldwide have no phone at home okay so yeah so these are some statistics uh, that you have to know so developing a telephone network on ground uh, whether wired or cellular is time consuming and expensive so you need a lot of resource you know to actually uh, build the tower and then get the connections and uh, keep it up and running and uh, you need to always have fuel right just if in case there's no of electricity immediately it switches to the generator mode right so it, it's very time consuming and expensive then you need a lot of infrastructure for that right you need to um, you need to do a lot of mining because for the tower you need a proper uh, metals right uh, they need to be installed or upgraded including roads utilities such as water and electricity so all these are very much important so not only just you know um, constructing a tower but we'll also have to think of uh, transportation we also have to think of water and electricity once satellites are deployed in orbit they can provide wide area service for telephone so that's the importance you see once there are satellites okay you can actually use it for a longer time and not only that it can also cover a wider area so you have seen this in the uh, advantages of satellite communications, right? Okay. For uh, services uh, such as telephone, passive and uh, your internet. So based on the needs, okay, you can actually have facilities and you can connect them through the ground station. So that's the advantage, you know, of having a satellite uh, it's multi-purpose, but of course, uh, satellites don't come at a cheaper cost. Okay, uh, they are also costly, and maintaining them is also um, uh, a bigger task. Okay, because we need to make sure that they are in proper orbit, and uh, they are, you know, transmitting and uh, receiving information. Okay. An internet search for uh, mobile satellite companies will provide a confusing array of data. Okay, array is nothing but you know, a combination or a sequence of information with uh, uh, company mergers and uh, uh, filings for bankruptcy uh, frequently being reported. So I think you must be very much aware with our um, uh, telecom operators in our country, isn't it? So previously we used to have a lot of operators. Yes or no? And right now, you know, we are we are down to probably three operators, right? Previously, I remember we used to have about uh, uh, eight, nine operators, service providers. Okay, but right now we just have three major uh, service providers. So all this happened because of uh, you know the uh, merging. Okay, a um, few few companies going bankrupt okay because of loss of uh, mm, loss of revenue okay right unfortunately many of the internet uh, reports do not have dates and uh, um, it becomes difficult to determine the current situation or possible future developments and only those systems that appear to be well established will be described okay so Ultimately, you know, sustaining in the market is a challenge. Understanding people's needs, uh, understanding people's, um, uh, you know, the the customer satisfaction, you know, meeting meeting, you know, in the industry they call it a CSAT, 
okay customer satisfaction so this has to be met they have a measure you know to um, to check how much is or what is our csat score okay they refer to it as a csat score so they you know there are separate teams quality teams okay audit teams so there will be separate teams uh, uh, who will be checking on the quality and uh, you know delivery of services right most of the systems that offer uh, telephone services provide users with dual mode phones that operate to uh, gsm standards so you know that right in uh, in your gsm we have about 1800 1900 then uh, uh, you know we have even uh, uh, 900 so so all this you know it's it's multiple multiple frequency ranges so gsm stands for uh, global system for mobile communications gsm okay um before it was it was called group special mobile okay but uh, later many of them started adopting in different countries and uh, you know it started uh, gaining popularity than the cdma okay uh, well here we do uh, use gsm more than cdma but uh, outside okay in different countries they do use um, cdma uh, more okay it is the, it is most widely used standard for cellular and personal communications the user frequencies are in uh, in about uh, uh, the l band and s band okay which is 1 to 2 gigahertz and 2 to 4 gigahertz range where geostationary uh, satellites are employed okay these require large on board antennas in the range of 100 to 200 meter square so we need very big antennas okay to implement these kind of um, communication system so there are some types here okay that you can just uh, look into where will be uh, seeing asian cellular system mm. most of the time you know these questions will be uh, most of the time you know these uh, questions will be asked uh, in your examinations um, students any doubts any doubts you can ask me yes mohan you have a doubt sir no geo signal near my house sir sorry i couldn't get you right there okay so so we are looking into um, asian uh, cellular system okay where uh, uh, it, it's also called as acs okay so this utilizes one uh, garuda geosynchronous satellite i think by now you all should be knowing what is geostationary and geosynchronous synchronous happens you know with respect to the uh, earth's movement okay so we find that the satellite is constant but then it's also uh, moving in sync with the earth's uh, rotation so this satellite is covering the asia pacific area and uh, an area of about 11 million square miles okay so that's that's a huge area which actually the satellite can cover so you can just imagine you know the footprints of this is from china uh, in the north to indonesia in the south philippines and uh, guinea in the east okay to india and pakistan in the west so you now that's the level of uh, coverage okay that we are talking about 
so it's not just uh, you know single uh, single station or single uh, you know within within 10 kilometers or within few kilometers but then this can actually cover a lot of uh, countries as well okay so in fact the whole continent the satellite is positioned at, at about 123 degree uh, east longitude okay so just like how we have these coordinates here okay. so ultimately we have uh, these uh, these positions okay with respect to uh, uh, with respect to the longitude and uh, the variation now there can be a small uh, you know variation with respect to um, the positions okay north and south okay uh, plus or minus three degrees okay so that's the level of uh, that's the level provided okay it will stabilize uh, at the assigned equatorial longitude variation after 3.7 years in operation okay so as soon as we launch a satellite okay we cannot expect it to be uh, stable but then as and when we keep as and when it's in motion okay it will start stabilizing and it will come back to its uh, designated position which is about 123 degrees um, towards the longitude <laughs> So, by placing the satellite uh, in an inclined orbit, the north to south station keeping uh, maneuvers may be dispensed with. So, for this uh, station keeping, okay, as you all know, there are uh, motors. Okay, there are uh, there are motors which actually um, have this thrust, which creates thrust and moves the satellite towards the left or right or towards the north or south. So, you know, all these are done with a lot of precision. The savings in weight achieved by not having to carry fuel for these maneuvers allows the communications payload to be increased. Okay, so we have to even carry some fuel uh, okay, for its uh, functioning because we cannot expect uh, every time uh, that there's going to be uh, solar energy. Okay. But this arrangement requires use of tracking antennas at the ground station network uh, control center. Okay. So as you increase the number of sensors, okay, your uh, your complexity as the complexity increases, your sensors also does increase. So if your sensors are increasing, then you need to have a system, okay, which uh, which can take care or which can receive signals and transmit signals and give us proper information. The population of uh, regions uh, covered so far, you know, is, is over 3.5 billion. Okay, so that's a lot of, um, you know, that's that's huge number of, of people covered. The satellite has capacity for at least 11,000 uh, simulations, uh, simultaneous telephone channels, servicing up to 2 million subscribers. Okay, so that's a huge number. So that's a huge number so that's the importance of having a satellite which can actually you know take care of um, a lot of uh, communications okay so that's the importance now very important concept here called spot beams okay um, could be asked in your examinations the satellites uh, utilize two 12 meter l band antennas okay so l band is something you know which which comes in few gigahertz range Okay, so as you have seen here, I have even given it, it's from one to two gigahertz. Okay, so these antennas, okay, uh, they actually use a 12 meter uh, L band uh, frequency, and this is shaped like an umbrella. Okay, so this can generate about 140 spot beams. These are just like you know, um, if you use um, a torch, okay, that would uh, that would show up as a spot, right? So we'll see the explanation. A spot beam in tele telecommunications is a satellite signal that is especially concentrated in power, okay? So which means so that it covers a limited geographic area on Earth, okay? 
So these are very much useful uh, with the military purposes with respect to tracking, okay, where you can actually um, target a particular area and uh, you can blow up the image and actually check as to what's happening live. Onboard digital switching uh, is provided with routes, uh, which routes calls between the beams. So you have uh, circuitries, which actually helps you in uh, uh, taking the load of your telecommunication and also it can uh, switch between different calls. Just like how you are, uh, when you're traveling, there's a, there's a concept called handoff, right? So the same concept happens here. Okay. So handoff is nothing but, you know, where you move from one cell to another cell, right? So in that case, um, you will be uh, finding that you are uh, migrated to another cell. So this happens basically for two reasons, okay? One, if your network is too loaded, okay? Um, if there are a lot of subscribers in a particular cell, then you'll be migrated to another cell or or probably if, if the services aren't good at the present uh, uh, locations uh, cell, then you will be uh, handed off okay to another cell. Thereby, this is in this is one way in which uh, you know the uh, quality is uh, kept in check. Okay. So there are different uh, subscribers okay um, in different modes as I mentioned previously. Okay. And these uh, services include voice telephony, internet connectivity, data, okay, and paging also. Are you all aware as to um, what is a, a paging? Have you all used this technology? Can someone unmute and respond? Or are you aware as to what is a pager? Yes. Uh, if I'm not wrong, pager they use it in the hospitals. So mm. If okay. at all someone is uh, someone has some emergency, mm -hmm. so they page each other to like call each other out. No. 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 Any other answers? I think probably your generation is not, uh, you know, very much aware of this, uh, you know, pager. Uh, yeah. Anybody wants to throw some light? Uh, Pawan, I couldn't get you. I couldn't get you there. Could you please repeat? It is used to send text messages. Yes, yes. Exactly. They no longer use it now. And uh, previously, uh, cell phones so, were not that uh, popular, and then uh, you know uh, pages were used extensively. So, say for example, if I have to send message to someone, or if I have to. Uh, you know, uh, inform uh, a person, then I have to call that uh, you know, pager company and then I have to say, you know, uh, class at 1210, for example, right? So class at 1210. So what is going to happen? Um, they will they will ask, you know, what's the uh, number and uh, they would personally uh, send the information to your pager. Okay, so it, it will be like in the form of uh, text. So that was the technology. It was very much used, uh, uh, you know, with the updates with sports, okay, entertainment, and uh, all this stuff. And uh, messages used to be very uh, short and crisp. For example, call, call Richard or call me or call contact this number. You know, so messages used to be very short, and um, somehow you know it didn't pick up quite right, uh, where uh, people didn't feel that you know they were connected personally because they had to call someone, the, the service provider, um, send the information there, and then they would broadcast it to your pager. So it didn't pick up quite right. So that's when, you know, uh, cell phones started gaining popularity, okay? And uh, 
you know that's how it's been so far right so it not only provides um, your internet uh, connectivity okay it also helps in uh, data services and it also uh, is used for uh, paging right so these are some of the um, uh, uh, ranges okay that you can uh, look into okay uh, where we are using few frequencies for uplink and downlink okay so your mobile links operate at uh, frequencies in l band okay so uh, so l band it has the uplink of 1625.5 okay to about 1660.5 uh, okay then uh, not only that it can have a downlink range okay uh, it can have a downlink range from 1525 uh, to about 1559 megahertz then the gateway okay the uh, gateway is something where you know it's like a junction and uh, it starts moving on from there okay uh, and uh, the c band uses uplink 6.4 to 6.7 gigahertz and downlink of 3.4 to 3.7 so gateway is utilizing c band okay and your mobile links are using l band okay so the gateway uh, terminals actually uh, provide access to national telephone networks so what are these national telephone networks um, you know if in case in in, in emergency okay uh, you'll have to call up that number so these are you know your gateway uh, terminals it, it not only that uh, it's a toll free number as well a second satellite uh, will be employed uh, to expand the service into western and central asia europe and northern africa so this is how you know the bifurcations happen uh, between the frequency ranges